That's not possible. Surely that can't be done. And we look up to the KFC they're out here making some craziness. I thought to myself, wow, impossible, impractical, whatever it might be. I can make one of those. You know what I mean? DIY. At home. How hard can it be? Very hard. That's how hard it is. This was wow. Let me just tell you about it. To say this was difficult would be an understatement. I spent hours in Fusion 360. I had print after print fail on me. Fly off the print bed. Let's get into it. So you saw the same trailer I saw. You were inspired. I felt like a new human being. I thought I can make one of those. So I looked around. I picked out all the computers I had. This was the smallest one. Little Zotac ripped it apart straight away. I thought, how can I make this work? Put it on my Ender 3 print bed. It was way too big. I couldn't print anything to go around this. I went to Home Depot. I went to Home Base. I got a bucket sprayed it black it wouldn't even fit this thing was way too big they used a nut a little tiny nut in the kfc console we need to get rethinking we need to be thinking on different wavelengths what can we do diy at home clearly my little beast here i7 16 gigs of ram gtx 1060 is too much we need to wind it back and i got to thinking thought i've got a powerful gaming rig upstairs what can we do and then it came to me steam link run a raspberry pi with steam link steam link into my gaming rig and we got cyberpunk running 10 ADP ultra settings no problem loaded up fusion 360 and got to work got my dimensions in for the raspberry pi started making a bucket and here we go hidden with the time lapse So there it is, hours and hours condensed into a couple of seconds for your viewing pleasure. So let me show you what we're working with. These are the STLs we've exported. We've got a little stand here for the drawer. The drawer itself that sits on that with a nice little groove and a little stump in the bottom just for a bit of stabilization so the drawer doesn't come flying out as it did with the first version. Here's the body. We got the standoffs there, all the ports, a nice hole in the front for the drawer. Everything just coming together nicely. This is the body, hopefully the final one because you know we did a couple of different versions. This is the stand that I had to print for the Raspberry Pi because I can't take dimensions and I had to reprint the thing in four different sizes, four different times. And then finally, we've got the top. Nothing fancy, just sits on the top there. Now let me see if I can try and express how painful this was to print. I know I'm a novice and I didn't use any adhesive as you can see on this first print but as it was printing I thought you know it's a nice surface it's one of those textured surfaces it'll stick 12 hours it had to stick for it won't stick over 12 hours so as we progress through this lovely time lapse of the print my anxiety grew to the point where it popped, just slid off, ooh, slid off the print bed. My pain was unfathomable. Are you stupid or something? So as you would do after a traumatic experience like that, I made some changes. I put my print in a cardboard box that I fashioned out of tape and cardboard quality. And I put more print stick on the print bed than I really should but all in all it came out well and we actually managed to get some decent prints printed out the drawer the support and the top all came out just fine after I made those changes and use a lot more of adhesive so here I am taking the body off now and it was lovely I gave it a nice little tug just to make sure it was still stuck on there 
and look at all that glue of course it was still stuck on there good and proper so after that great experience printing all of these parts i thought i need a little relax let's just get some warm water let's just soak all the glue off those prints and just enjoy ourselves for a moment i know this might not be the way everyone will do it people will be in the comment section you need to use alcohol wipe if that's you please leave a lovely comment and i'll see you down there in whilst you're there leave a like on the video so there we go everything's printed all ready to go we got our raspberry pi all our bits printed out and ready to put together so screwing in the raspberry pi into the stands in the bottom of the case these are the little leds i bought on amazon just wrapped them around a glass and just got them all ready in a nice little circle put some tape on them to hold it all together and then put that on top of the raspberry pi use the little stand there and the support to put the tray in and add the lights and there we go i put a little bit of hot glue to hold those lights in but that was it there you can see the tray mechanism working its magic stopping the tray from falling out like it did before so then we had to you know do a bit of testing got my son to help me opening and closing the drawer filling it with bits and pieces and it all works fine all working good so let's show you what it looks like close up some nice like, b-roll shots and then we'll play some games on it So we got Steam Link installed on it, easy peasy, just go to the Steam Link website, it's like two lines in the terminal, and bam, you're into Steam Link. So let's load up some games, Cyberpunk, City Skylines, Ball Guys, we played them all, we plugged it all in, connected to Doris, my little beast, Xbox 360 controller, and let's go so we loaded up steam link loaded up just fine connected to doris all the games showed up so we went on to cyberpunk and of course there was an update so whilst we're waiting for those updates let's have a little look at city skylines these are the games you want to play when you are connected to another computer you know latency all that sort of stuff doesn't matter when you're playing rts games when you're playing city builder games so this came out looking quality moving around the city was smooth the rain effect didn't make it look great but you could zoom all the way in and you didn't lose a lot of quality it's only streaming at 1080p but that's plenty enough not for where i was sat i could see a bit of uh, pixelation and stuff but you shouldn't be sat that close to your telly anyway like your mum told you so then we loaded up full guys while we were waiting just to test the latency and it wasn't too bad we got the qualified on the first lap but then on the second round you know my ooh, we're a bit rusty so and all in all it was a good gaming experience on full guys so i can't complain on that one so then on to the big one cyberpunk 2077 1080p ultra settings it was buttery smooth the latency on this one was a bit higher so driving around uh, shooting was a bit difficult but the visuals well they were up there just have a look So me being the optimist that I am, I thought I'd try and bump it up, didn't go to 2k, I thought straight to 4k and the Raspberry Pi just said no, this is the actual frame rate, jittery and just uh, yeah, painful to watch. So we swiftly moved back to 1080p and lovely, played it for a good while, nice and smooth, just look at that. Oh lovely jubbly so i just want to say if you do want to make this for yourself all the links are in the description 
thingy verse files and whatnot. If you want to see me make this for the Raspberry Pi 4 or any improvements, please leave a comment. I like to put chocolate, not chicken, in um, my gaming consoles because you know, you don't eat cold chicken, you don't even warm chicken that's been under the heater for hours. You don't want that. But if you want a more practical approach, you can put all the stuff that you don't really have a place for SD cards, all your printing bits and pieces, glue and whatnot. Just chuck it all in the drawer and keep it next to your 3D printer. Or, you know, plugged in your TV, whatever you want to do with it. As always, project ideas are welcome in the comments section. Hit the subscribe button and check out the channel. Make sure you leave a like if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.